what is up guys welcome or welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is day and i'm a security analyst and college student and this video is going to be the next installment of our cybersecurity home lab so yeah let's just get into the video so today we're going to be doing the final part of this project so what we're essentially going to be doing is first of all let me go over what we've done so far so so far we've gone over the introduction we've gone over um you know going over the project topology and the scope Whenever configuring PFSense, whenever configuring Security Onion, whenever configuring Kali Linux, whenever configuring some PFSense interface and firewall rules, we built a Windows server and configured the Active Directory on it, and then we added a user to the Active Directory domain, and then in our last video, we installed Splunk on Ubuntu server. So now we have our whole environment all set up. Now, with Splunk on the Ubuntu server, we need to actually start forwarding logs to those to the server. So uh, the way Splunk uses, um, the way Splunk gets logs from um, remote endpoints is usually through a universal forwarder. There are other methods, but um, the one we're going to be working on today is actually going to be using a universal forwarder. So I'm going to be going through that today. So let me just kind of go over the blog. So in order to get the resources for this project, just head over to resources section here in cyberacademy.com and then head over to labs. And here in labs, you will see building a cybersecurity home lab. And so I'm just going to go over to this tab and just uh, move on to the video. So, yeah, so today we're going to be configuring uh, the universal folder on our Windows server um, that we configured in the previous video, which was this video. So if you've not watched that, please be sure to go watch it. And yeah, just follow this whole playlist. It covers everything you need to set up your home lab. And okay, so in order to log the activities on, on endpoints, Splunk uses a mechanism called the Universal Folder. The Universal Folder can be installed on Windows, uh, Unix, and Mac agents to forward logs to your Splunk instance. So we're just going to be going into that in this video. So let me change my screen to my VMware screen. Okay, right here, I'm currently in my Domain Controller tab. Um, as you can see here, I have uh, Google.com pulled up. So I, I had to like work on creating some firewall rules here in um, PFSense to kind of allow um, outbound access from my uh, domain controller. But I'll be going back. I'll probably be going back to, you know, get the rules back in place so that um, I, I mean, I don't really think I need outbound access, but it really depends. Um, the lab is really, really based off of how you're feeling, what you really want out of it. So it's really flexible. You don't have to necessarily follow everything I do here to the T. So it's really for you to actually take initiative and design it the way you want it to be. So all of that aside, let's just get right into installing our universal forwarder and sending uh, logs from our domain controller to Splunk. So yeah, um, in order to download the universal forwarder, we're going to be using this link. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the link in the... Um, in the description below, but first of all, uh, let me actually switch over to my Splunk tab. Uh, okay, and now we have to start the Splunk instance. Okay, so start our Splunk instance, navigate to the download slash Splunk slash bin directory, and then put in this command uh, period forward slash Splunk start, and it's going to start our Splunk instance. And in a couple of seconds, we should be able to access the Splunk site, uh, our Splunk server at HTTP colon slash slash Splunk. If I can type slash slash Splunk. A, uh, and then colon port 8000. All right, there we go. So I can sign into my Splunk instance. So I'm say day cyber works and put in my password. All right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. So here's our home screen. So first I want to do is actually set up receiving on our Splunk server. So we have to, on our Splunk server, we have to set up um, the ability to actually allow logs to come into the server. So which is classified as receiving in Splunk. So uh, in order to do this, we have to head over to settings. And here in settings, we're going to head over to forwarding and receiving. Here in forwarding and receiving, we're going to configure receiving. And then here we're going to click new receiving port. All right, there we go. So, so we want to be listening on port 9997. And I believe that's the default port that Splunk listen, listens on for the universal folder. So 9997. And then we'll save. 
and that's it so here we can see that this port is so Splunk is listening on this port for inbound connections from our universal forwarder all right cool so next one also do is also create an index so in Splunk there are these things called index so indices are like this like um, blocks of storage where um, our logs go to and then we can now use these things called search heads to search for data from these indexes so we want to create an index for our windows events so we're going to name that index windows events log so let's do that immediately so in order to do this we'll head over to settings and here in settings we're going to go to indexes which is right here and here in indexes we're going to create a new index so right here we're going to create a new index all right so we're just going to name the index win event log and that's all we're going to do we're not going to change anything here we're going to click save and all right so we should scroll down we should see these uh yeah so we should see so we have 500 gigabytes and uh, we currently don't have anything coming in so we just have like one megabyte so that's fine so let's actually open a new tab here and um next we want to do is um head over to our domain controller and navigate to this link so i'm going to copy this link from here and put it in here all right all right cool let me paste it so it's essentially going to splunk.com um and we want to download the universal forwarder but first of all um i should allow downloading on this so internet options security and then there should be an option for okay download enable enable download all right cool uh, finally we can get rid of internet explorer and actually use google chrome to download our splunk universal forwarder so uh, technically some of these things we're able to do on our domain controller we generally might not be able to do it in like an actual enterprise environment like you might not be able to download certain like things like certain like files or apps or things like that as a matter of fact we could also check our security onion interface and we could possibly see an alert um about you know probably like a file download or something like that let's see you know analyst vm let's sign into it and let's see let's reload should probably be an alert about something 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 hmm there's no alert yet from our security onion all right let's just keep working on that um let's get started we'll check back on security onion to see so yeah let's uh go back to let's uh go back to searching for our download um universal forwarder so let's just search that so say download uh universal forwarder there we go all right so we can just click on uh, this one let's click on the first one okay 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 all right so we might have to sign in yeah i was not, i was hoping i didn't have to sign in but yeah we have to sign in so uh so sign in here and then after you're done signing in um you can we can move on to the next stage so login and then put in your credentials all right so i'm signed in um here we have our free trials and downloads so we're gonna scroll all the way down and go to download now so we're gonna be downloading the uh, splunk universal folder for windows obviously so we're gonna be downloading this one that has windows 10 windows server 2012 2012 r2 2016 and 20, 2019 so if we're gonna be just doing it for like our windows 10 machine we'd probably choose this one we're gonna we download it for our server so let's choose this a uh, 64 bit one so download now that's a little slow but the download should start let's see okay yeah so it's currently downloading take a couple of seconds and when it's downloaded we can configure the universal forwarder and start sending logs to our splunk machine all right so now that our splunk instance has been downloaded we head over to our downloads directory and then double click on it to install check this box to accept the license agreement and yes we're using a on-premise splunk instance let's see you can customize options next yeah we don't need all of that so we'll go back back and then we'll just click next all right so 
username is going to be just use a username um, and password you use for your Splunk instance. So for me, it's this. You confirm password. All right, so host name or IP address. So we're gonna be using the IP address of our Splunk instance. Uh, right here, it is 192.168.135.128. So 192.168.135.128. Gonna copy that. And the default port here is 8089. Next, and then back again with the IP address and the default port here is 9997 next and we'll install that and then when the installation process is complete we will then head over back to our Splunk instance and then uh, allow for the logs to be sent into the Splunk instance from this universal forwarder alright so the installation is complete we'll click finish and head back to our Splunk instance so what we want to do is head over to settings and here click on add data and uh, three major ways Splunk adds data um, Splunk gets data is through uploading a file or monitoring on the Splunk instance or using a forwarder which in this case we're going to be doing so forward and here we can see our Cyberworks domain controller is already configured so uh, uh, if you have done the settings properly, you should see your domain controller here as available host. So we're going to click on this and it's going to add it to our selected hosts and then we'll click next. Oh, actually, so, uh, we're just going to, well, we're going to put a server class name and here I'm just going to say domain controller. All right. So after this, we're going to click next. Okay, so now we have to choose what we want to be monitoring from this machine, right? So here in local event logs, I want to monitor application, uh, forwarded events, security. Actually, I'm going to just click everything. Um, ideally, you're supposed to be lo uh, logging specific things, but for the case of this lab, I'm going to be monitoring everything. Uh, you can look through here, um, you know, and see what other things you can possibly monitor. You can monitor for ports. Uh, you can look monitor for like the performance of the uh, the machine. You can monitor from like uh, you can get data from any API service or database with the script. So, but for for this uh, particular lab, we're just gonna be monitoring uh, the local event log. So, application, forwarded events, security, setup, and system. And then we'll click next. All right, so. Uh, what we want to do is for here. I remember when I said I talked about index. Uh, the index. Uh, so, like I said, the Splunk platform stores the data as events in the selected index. So we previously created a win event log index. So this index is what we're going to be choosing uh, for this particular machine. So win event log and review. All right. So everything is done as we desired. So we'll click submit. All right. So now we can start searching but what we want to do is go back to this screen and actually reload and over time you should start seeing like more data here okay this is one me megabyte let me see let me sign in here probably that would like send some forwarded events okay let me sign in and we should start seeing data getting populated in uh, this place so like here that we have one megabyte, we should start seeing like more megabytes over time as we have more activity. Okay, so now we have two megabytes. Last event was from a few seconds ago. So yeah, so our 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 data is starting to become populated. Um, so yeah, let's just, so here like that's pretty much the the, the end of this video. Uh, we could start searching. So start searching. Um, okay, so here I'm just gonna say skip. But yeah, there are so many things you can do with uh, Splunk, and I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on Splunk um, on the channel in the next couple of days slash weeks, um, because Splunk is such an amazing tool. I love Splunk so much, and there's so much you can do with this tool. So, you know, here there's uh, the different fields, but the, 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 the three main fields Splunk has are 
the host field, the source field, and the source that fields. And the rest of these are interesting fields that are part of you know the logs that we are sending to Splunk. So different things here. There's several, several, several things we can uh, see from this. You know, uh, I'm so excited for this. Like several, several things we can see from these logs. Um, they're very, very detailed, and and yeah, it's just such a such a such a amazing tool. And you know, this is just the least of things we can do. You know, the different forwarding and logging capabilities we can do. We can really like dig down into the nitty gritty things that we need to be monitoring, like processes, like you know, command line events, and different different things like that. So yeah, it's it's really amazing, and I, I encourage you to really really dig into this. Like you have a whole lab set up, and you have the ability to really really learn different things like detection rules, like how to how to log, uh, you know, a, a server, and different things like that. So. You know start learning about this thing you know do your research you know and if you n need any help with any of this stuff you know you can join our discord server ask questions um and i'll be i'll do my best to help you uh, the link to the discord server is in the description below so like i said you know try as much as possible to learn as much as you can but yeah quickly let's go back to our security onion interface and see if we have any alerts from all of these things we'll be doing in the last couple of minutes Let's see, let's reload this. Okay, that's pretty interesting. We didn't have we don't have any interest in alerts. Let's see, hunt. Is there anything different? Okay, so yeah, we have like yeah, so here we have like a, a exe or DLL file download. Let's see what that's about. Let's drill down to that. So from the source, the destination IP is our uh, domain controller. So one to the one six eight dot two dot ten. See, this was uh, with our intrusion detection systems, Ricotta. What else do we see? It's uh, encrypted traffic. What else do we see? What else do we see? Okay, it's like a thing, like a HTTP header. See, this was successful. Uh, this is the server was downloads. So this is like everything we can see here in our uh, our our log. So here we can see this. Uh, if you see if you see MZ and you see this program cannot be run in, in DOS mode in a log file, just know that that's an EXE file. Um, yeah, so it was TCP that was allowed. This is the rule category. So you, you see how much stuff like Sims can do, like so much, you know, how much you can really drill down into it. And this is the rule that triggered the alert. So um, alert when an HTTP traffic from an external network comes into our internet inter, inter, internal network. And then this is the message that it displays and all of that stuff. And uh, this, here's one tip I want to give you guys. If you're studying for the CYC Plus, this is a really, really great tool. And it's a really, really great lab to help you learn more about logging and different things like that. So I encourage you to view this lab out and start learning, messing with like different things to create different kind of logs. So you can get really, really used to looking at logs and analyzing logs and really understanding what these logs are about. So here we can see different things you know so much stuff uh, to really really drill down on but yeah this was really 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 fun um, like I said I'm so excited that the lab is complete um, and I would probably just be doing one more video to kind of like go over the lab and just kind of go over like next steps for uh, what you can do what you can add to the lab and really give it a, a, a more functionality and stuff like that so yeah thank you very much for watching the video and if you like this video please make sure to smash the like button and be sure to subscribe and share this video with anyone who you think it will provide value to once again thank you very much for watching the video i will see you in the next video